Hey everyone, welcome to another Hollywood Hot Take with your host, Tony D. And little Joan, little Joan, finally back from the couch because it's raining and I made her come over here. So you're going to be good, right? You're going to be good? Be in the video for a change? Here, look, I'll give you a treat. You can sit nice and we'll talk about the woke Hollywood stars. Won't that be nice? There you go. Yum. Mm, yum, yum. Okay. That'll be good. All right. Uh, this is the story people were talking about. Little Nas uh, has a Nike Satan sneakers. <laughs> what? Um, and supposedly there's a drop of human blood. This is a, uh, this has been used before, actually, in comics. There was a guy who uh, he had. Uh, uh, this was at the height of comics in the '90s. Yeah, I'm telling a comic story. One of my comic stories, Jim. Here, come over here. Oh, pain in the neck. You're all wet. Just, just sit here. We're just outside. Anyhow, uh, so back in the 90s, this guy wanted to do a special thing for comics. So he had his DNA put inside all the uh, markers he used to sign comics with. Uh, and he had a really obscure, it's now an obscure comic. At the time, it was kind of big. Uh, I forget what it was called. It was like an alien ninja character. Zen the Ninja or something like that. Ninja Zen or Zen Ninja. I don't remember. But, um, you know, he got the idea because uh, Kiss actually supposedly put a drop of their blood in the ink that made their comics. And that was all oh, supposed to be cool and scary. So this is just a promotional thing to get attention for Little Nas. Uh, I saw the video that this song is based on where he gives Satan a lap dance. And it's... Pretty stupid. <laughs> it just, I don't like the song. Uh, I think it's just dumb and overblown, really overproduced. Um, I think you'd have to, you know, have your brain examined to buy these shoes. And they're just, you know, they're offensive to get attention. That's what they are. Obviously, people on the Christian right are going to be pissed off because, oh my God, uh, Satan sneakers, blah, blah, blah. It's not even like a cool way, you know? If like a heavy metal band, I think, had done something like this, it would have been cooler somehow, you know? Plus, I don't think they would have made a limited edition, only 666 pairs ever made or something. Um, but, you know, this kind of feeds the narrative, the paranoid narrative of the Christian right to some extent, the tiny, tiny, tiny minority that exists uh, who aren't, you know, who, who believe in conspiracy theories and, and, and whatnot. Um, so, you know, don't feed into it because what he really wants is attention. And if you ignore it, it just goes away because then it's a flop and then why'd we do this? Uh, it's funny that Nike did it. I, you know, them being such a huge company, they usually, you know, these companies are usually, oh, we're so woke and wonderful. We like to avoid controversy. Okay, you don't seem to care about controversy when it's aimed at a certain group of people. That's uh, Now it's cool and hip to bash Christians, I guess. But uh, I think it's all dumb. I think you should ignore it and don't, don't feed the beast, as they say. Scarlett Johansson says, Politics, not my job. And Biden win felt like the end of a war brought me to tears. Well, that's a bit contradictory. Ah, what's going on with your face there, ScarJo? You're looking like you had some work done. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, yeah, so just another celebrity saying things. Um, I, I'm more disturbed by this picture than anything else. Did she have work done? It looks like the, the face is tighter. Face is tighter on it. Not liking that. Not liking that. But, you know, what is she going to do? Throw her whole career away? I mean, the people on Twitter would destroy her in an instant. Uh, SNL roasts Joe Biden on running for re-election. A nice way to ask if he plans to be alive in three years. Shiny Night Live has finally aired a skit that acknowledges Joe Biden is now the White in the White House and his administration has its hand on the levers of power. Yeah, so now it's kind of okay to make fun of Joe Biden, as long as you don't make fun of him too much. Uh, not like they're going to go after him like they went after Trump, of course. Uh, they probably couldn't even get an actor to be Biden, to be biting, and to be biting enough to really make it work. So, 
you know, when it, when your comedy's blunted going in, how how are you gonna how are you gonna do anything? Oh, uh, you sound like a right wing lunatic, man. That ain't funny. Um, I mean, Biden is so ripe. I mean, just look at his picture. <laughs> look at his picture. I mean, like, eh, where where am I? I have to put on this mask. Eh. Uh, and I'm sure. Jim Carrey, who was doing them for a while, and uh, Woody Woody Harrelson could do amazing things if you know they felt free enough to do it. But they're not going to do. It. They're going to lose millions of dollars just over a skit. They won't do it. I think. I, I think they're kind of too old, and uh, Jim Carrey seems a little too uh, a little too lefty to even want to do it. So he, he he seems a little bit angry, angry lefty, to me, my opinion. Uh, FN, uh, Fox News' Chris Wallace to Pisaki, you are being less transparent than the Trump administration. Uh, I don't know how to take that exactly, Wallace. I mean, after your uh, terrible behavior during the debate, I mean, you know, this is nothing. You're going to go after the press secretary, Biden's press secretary. Wow. This is super brave of you, man. Wow. You really, you know, Wallace really went after her, please. I can't believe Fox hasn't fired him yet, but they're turning into CNN, I think, so. Uh, effing blasphemy. Ricky Gervais blast protest over teachers showing Mohammed cartoon. That is one guy who's always solid on this stuff, and that's Ricky Gervais, man. Good for him. Um, he is against the suspension of a British teacher for showing a caricature of the Islamic pro... Prophet Muhammad questioning whether people will be punished for insulting unicorns next. Um, it was a class where the teacher was teaching about blasphemy. And, um, you know, he showed the cartoon and he talked about it. I don't think he was promoting the cartoon in any way. He was showing an example of what blasphemy is. And, of course, some parents got bent out of shape and then the uh, people picked it up. It's, you know, this is the state of the UK, unfortunately. When it comes to being super woke, um, you cannot make fun of the refugees who have been brought in by the European Union. And most of them are, are Muslim. And unfortunately, uh, so many came in in such a short period of time, they haven't really integrated in Western society as well as they could have if there were fewer of them. Um, but, you know, this is part of the, the thing, it, you know, you bombed their countries, you helped, uh, we, we bombed their countries, you know, where were they supposed to go? Just stand there and let the bombs drop off. So here they are. And, um, I mean that, that drove it initially. Now it's mostly economic. Uh, their countries are still kind of a wreck and, you know, it's like, People come in here from Mexico. It's it's better to come here. It's just more money. There's more opportunity. There's not a lot of opportunity when, you know, you can't join the, you don't want to join the cartel in Mexico. You don't want to, you know, it's hard to protect yourself from the cartel. So, you know, it's hard to, just harder to make a living in some of these countries. Um, so, good for you, Ricky. Always, always stand up guy. Ricky gives me hope. You know, Ricky gives me hope because he's been so consistent. And I think in the end, he will, man, he, he always sort of comes out on top. And he, he has survived cancel culture. He they can't cancel him. Try. Try. Last call star, Jamie Kennedy, <laughs> talks cancel culture. There's no forgiveness anymore. Um, it's funny they call him the last call star, Jamie Kennedy. They forgot about all his other terrible terrible movies in my view but um uh yeah jamie kennedy better get on board because uh do you remember when he did the rapper character and then they did a whole movie about it oh yeah they'll they'll go they'll cancel him eventually um but yeah you know it, it's great he's he's in on it it's it's great he's here he's on our side uh he's calling it out um it's a, it's gonna start with people like him right you know, Ricky has been solid from the beginning. Jamie now is coming out. He's got a little fame back. He's bringing his, uh, you know, bringing this movie out. You know, good. 
more and more are going to come out more the tide is slowly starting to turn slowly and people are going to start to go yeah man why why are we doing all this oh, i can't wait and finally bird girl trailer gives first look at harvey birdman adult swim spinoff and uh, i saw this on uh, twitter ian's my ian miles chung uh posted it uh here here's some woke trash <laughs> something like that this is what they canceled the venture brothers over and it looks bad the trailer looks bad um you know it's they're trying to do the same sort of wacky humor but it so far isn't working because it's not edgy right it's just it's just a copy if they were doing edgy stuff harvey would be better harvey and you know they're doing bird girl no now's the time for harvey now it would be funnier to have harvey because he would be attacked on all sides by the woke, and you could make fun of that instead they're gonna use bird girl and she's gonna have such a woke team and oh they're very wacky but they're woke and very diverse and it's like really you can't make that work sorry adult swim you, you're gonna try i don't know who's gonna watch this stuff anymore um Part of, you know, the great thing about the Adult Swim lineup was how subversive they were. Back in the Bush administration, you guys put up an ad. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, they had the character uh, Ignat from <laughs> um, uh, Hung Aqua Teen Hunger Force, right? They were, uh, he was one of the Moonanites. And he's this sort of square, pixely guy and... Um, and they made these really cheap uh, signs with him, light up signs. And they hid them in various places around the country, uh, mostly in urban areas where hipsters dwell. So they put one under a bridge. And I forget what city it was in. I want to say Philadelphia, but I don't think that was it. I don't remember. So they put this under the bridge. Well, this was during, this was at post 9-11. People freaked the F out because they didn't know what it was. And so it got reported, and they were like, oh, my God, was it a bomb? And <laughs> they, you know, they went under there, and, of course, it was just this wacky sign they had climbed up there and put there. No big deal, but they acted like, oh, my God, the world's coming to an end because somebody put up a sign, a sign that was illegal. Um, but, uh, you know, now, I mean, there, there they were being subversive. They were being edgy. I don't even know if they did it. I may, it might have been some of their fans and passing out this kind of stuff because that's the kind of crazy stuff they did. You know, they pass out stuff. It was very underground, very sort of cool. A lot of stuff they did on Adult Swim, uh, and now, you know, it, it's, you know, most of the people are getting older, and uh, they're they're sort of retreading the same ground. Got to keep it young. Comedy's a young man's game. A young woman's game too mostly a young man's game hate to tell you um women i think in general again not all women there are some very funny women out there but it's tougher for women because i think a lot of times they're um judged by their looks they tend to be more self-conscious guys don't tend to be that way they tend to be more confident confident ten confidence tends to feed comedy and stand up more I mean, just look at the stats. How many stand female stand-up comics are there? There's a few. I would say it, it splits about 80-20 in favor of the men. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's hard for women to do comedy, and not all of them are into it. Um, it has nothing to do with you know, sexism or anything like that. It has to do with the very nature of men and women. Um, women like to be entertained men like to entertain them it's just the way things work and yeah there are some really funny women out there but um you know this idea that we're gonna have equity and comedy oh boy no no you're not <laughs> you could try and you're gonna get a bunch of woke garbage and and wokeness is the enemy of comedy it's not funny there's nothing funny about it you can make fun of the wokeness the anti-woke stuff is way funnier now way funnier and man when this snaps back and that's part of what we uh uh or i wrote about in hollywoke another novel 
about how it all snaps back in this one particular movie. And people are going to love it. People will be drawn to offensive comedy again. And uh, this kind of stuff will be remembered for what it is. Like, oh, yeah, uh, diversion. Well, we had it back in the 80s and 70s. You know, and we made fun of it then. You know, we made fun of it. And Adult Swim made fun of it. The Super Friends added a bunch of woke characters to line, you know, to have some diversity in the lineup because people pressured them. So they made up some characters and we, they totally made fun of these. But now look at them. Now they've become everything they used to make fun of. Just like every other comedian who wants to keep his job, I guess. All right. So that's it, Holly Woke. Next video.